San Diego, from its vibrant downtown to its buzzing beach communities, it is a great place to live and a destination for people from all over the world. But with this month's unprecedented storm, the region has faced new challenges, met in no small part by San Diego's public works professionals. And now we're here to learn, discuss, and celebrate the great work they and their colleagues all over the world do. From managing our public spaces, keeping our cities moving, and of course, responding to emergencies. This is the place to learn to maximize your abilities and your ability to leave things better than you found them. American Public Works Association brings you PWX 2023, and you're watching PWX TV. Welcome to the San Diego Convention Center, where thousands of public works professionals are already gathering to network and collaborate across four days of exciting sessions, workshops, and of course, the all-important exhibition hall. And who better to welcome us than APWA President Gary Lozier. How does it feel to be right here in San Diego? It feels great, Lamar. Two years of planning, uh, all the public works professionals across North America and around the world are here to see networks, to make uh, new friends, to learn about some ex exciting exhibits. We're really looking forward to it. Likewise, Gary, and we are super excited to be here as well for the very first edition of PWX TV. We'll talk a lot more with Gary momentarily, but first, uh, let's see what's coming up. It's not just the blue and the red lights, but it's also the amber and white lights that are out there as well. As San Diego springs back to business, our theme today is public works as first responders. We speak to Joseph Kroll and Jeffrey Foote about their work to push awareness of this vital role. We also get some insights from the field with stories from Cedar Rapids, Iowa and Encinitas, California about how they responded to recent storms. On a daily basis, just because we are safety focused, you never know what you'll be responding to. PWX TV is also home to the PWX TV film series. We've traveled the nation to capture some of the great work being done by public works departments. And where can you watch it all? PWX TV is on screens throughout the convention center, in select hotels across the city, via the PWX app, on the PWX website, and of course on social media, where you'll find extended versions of interviews, individual clips to share, and much more. And we're still here with APWA President Gary Lozier, but before we talk about the week to come, it's been a tough week here in San Diego. Any specific challenges to pulling this off? Well, the Public Works folks here in San Diego have been great. They, uh, they're they prepared for any emergency just in their regular day-to-day -day lives. So planning a little bit of PWX in advance um, really was not a big issue. They did have a main focus, their day jobs were there, but uh, the event as it sits here at the, at the conference center was planned to go ahead real well. That's right, it took a couple years to get this it's going. Two years worth of planning to get here, definitely. And what do you think of the attendees? and? What are they going to be talking about this year? Well, we've got attendees from all over North America, actually and around the world. Um, our, our theme this year is connecting the world through public works. And they're going to be seeing cutting edge technology on the exhibit floor. They're going to be learning from the best presenters in our education sessions. So they're going to be networking with their peers in the, in the public works industry. I think they're in for a full packed, exciting, informative weekend. What are you most excited about? I'm excited about getting to see the people again and getting the chance to talk to them, um, looking at the pride that they have in the work that the, the way that they're committed to the communities. Um, I, I really think that the benefits that we serve to our members is the fact that we're here for them to give them those uh, tools and those education sessions that they need to be better at what they do. Right. And speaking of there with better always comes challenges. Um, how can this conference help them maybe overcome those challenges, make connections and uh, move forward? When they get here, they have the ability to say, all right, I need to know something about a specific topic, snow removal, storm surges, uh, uh, flooding, things like that. We have de defined educational tracks that they can follow, learn as much as they can about that, meet somebody in that session, and now they've developed a contact for their career. You know that if you're part of this association, part of this network, you're 
you're uh, connected in a way. It's it's one big family. I, I like to say that you usually come to the conference and mo more so than handshakes, you'll see hugs. People like glad that. to see each other. They've made those connections. Um, they've learned something from each other. They appreciate the fact that they can call on each other, usually at all hours of the day or night. Everyone's and, always on alert here. Uh, uh, always on alert. Uh, when something bad happens, that's when we're performing at our best. And we're using the tools and the education that we've learned at events like this PWI conference. And speaking of performance, what does uh, your year hold as president? Uh, I'm looking forward to getting out to seeing a lot of our chapters. We've got 62 chapters across North America. Um, we'll be able to talk to the individuals in those, in those areas, uh, spread the message, uh, be able to promote the industry. Uh, I appreciate and thank them for the commitment to their communities um, and, and let, tell them to be proud of what they do. What are your priorities as president? I think for me this year, it's going to be being able to develop a, a sense of pride in what we do. But we are first responders at heart. We are there long before some of the agencies show up. We're there the last ones to leave. And we want to make sure that um, we're committed, we're proud of what we do. And that, I think that's the biggest message that we're looking for. And being recognized for all the hard work too. Well, uh, we're a little bit humble. Uh, recognition as long as, as, as it's as sensible. Um, but the thing is, is not to be afraid of being recognized more than anything else. Absolutely. Be proud. Be proud. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you very much, Noel. Now to our first spotlight on the great work being done in public works across the country. Let's head north to Ventura County, California, where their team is usually first in and last out in emergency response. When people think of first responders, they usually think of firefighters and law enforcement. The public works by law and by practice are also first responders. We're usually not the first in, one of the very first in, and we're usually the last out. Our crews are very aware that they're out in front of the public to take care of the best interest and the health and safety of the public. A lot of times people don't know what Public Works does until something goes wrong. So I think getting out in front of that with our social media and giving a behind the scenes look as to what we're doing here at Public Works is really important to the community. For the most part, Public Works as a, as a profession is invisible. For the first time ever, we've had people hug us after projects. Now they understand the importance of Public Works and the importance of our pursuits to their quality of life and to the quality of life of those in the rest of the community. And later on, we'll go in depth in the PWX TV studio on what it means for Public Works to be first responders. But first, some stories from the field. Let's hear how they tackled recent storms in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and not far from here in Encinitas, California. The city of Encinitas, California, we had a couple atmospheric rivers uh, this past winter. And basically, the impacts involved street flooding. Uh, strong winds that resulted in downed trees and also uh, high tides and erosion of our beaches. Our response uh, required advanced staging of, of traffic control signage, advanced staging of our pumps in the flood prone areas that we call hot spots uh, to control storm water and also making sure that we had shifts that were avail available around the clock to respond efficiently. I'm the Director of Public Works for the City of Encinitas, California. My role involves having execution being efficient and having systematic processes in place to protect the quality of life and public safety of my community. The advice that I have for other departments is to be prepared and have advanced planning in advance of a storm. Uh, set out your traffic control signage, set out your, your vacuum pumps, uh, to help control storm water. Have your shifts prepared to, to be around the clock to respond accordingly. And I also ad advise that during a storm event that you take advantage of resources available to monitor the storm. For example, the National Weather Service, your traffic control cameras, and also field inspections that help you monitor and utilize your resources so you can respond efficiently. If Public Works was not available to help figure things out and be a first responder, it would be a tra tragedy because we, like I said, we have the heavy equipment. We have all the resources to handle storm water, um, inspections. Uh, so 
Public Works is a critical component of being a first responder. August 10th, uh, 2020, right in the middle of COVID, uh, we had a derecho. And at the time, we had never even heard of what a derecho was. It's basically a very severe thunderstorm. This derecho event had 140 mile an hour winds, sustained for 45 minutes across the entire city. And it did uh, very devastating damage to the city. About 70% of our tree canopy either knocked down or damaged. We were without power for uh, 10 days, also without internet. We, it started out as a very calm day and we were out working and then everything just went black and then winds picked up to 140 miles an hour. And so uh, it was a dangerous situation. We did have a lot of number, number of people that were injured. We had one fatality during the event and it was so widespread across the entire 70 miles of our community. So um, very impactful and uh, it really taught us a lot. We really prepare and we plan for really the worst and we just hope for the best. And that's really our best uh, way we can do that. Uh, I'm the Assistant Public Works Director. Uh, my focus is on the operations side. I've got a history of working with the operations department. Um, and so we really work uh, as far as any sort of the, the field resources uh, responsible for responding to any type of emergency that occurs in Cedar Rapids. It's very helpful for the community to, to have uh, all resources and all hands on deck when there is an emergency. And being able to work hands in hand with sort of the traditional first responders, the fire and police departments, um, oftentimes they need our assistance even to get to the scene. Uh, or to make the scene safe so they can get there or to clean up afterwards. So I think it's very important that we all work together in order to serve the public. When you have an event like that where you have these 144 mile an hour winds for an extended period of time, you end up having communication problems because the towers end up getting knocked down. So that became very challenging for us in order to be able to communicate. So we basically put together strike teams and we put those teams to be able to go out and work together to get and respond to where people needed us. My advice for other departments would be to plan and network and be able to get out and meet who it is that your, your, co your, um, your counterparts are in those other departments so that when you're called upon, uh, you can respond. And when you need help, you can call out to them and get that same level of response. Our next feature from the world of public works stays in California, Marin County. It's a great place to live and work with a public works team that's highly adept in emergency response and disaster resilience. Marin County is probably the most amazing place that I've ever worked. It's a very special place. We as a team have the skill set and the expertise to tackle whatever comes our way. You can offer better ways of doing things and folks actually listen to you. We have an amazing uh, and a diverse group who are dedicated to public service. They just knock it out of the park consistently. We have to get out in the field in real time and help ensure public safety, developing creative solutions quickly. We are 24-7, 365. We take care of 50 plus buildings, radio sites on mountaintops to pump stations in residential neighborhoods. You can come here, do your best work, and do it in one of the most beautiful places on the planet. So if you're ready for something better, come to Marin DPW. Up next, we welcome Joseph Kroll and Jeffrey Foote to the studio to talk about the role of public works as first responders. But first, let's go to Sonoma County, where changes in the running of their department have helped them do the essential work they do. Our department merged with another county department called General Services. So we now are public infrastructure, which is the combination of the two of transportation and public works and general services. It's an attempt by us to pull together two different areas that have common threads, um, that have to work on contracting together, that have to uh, understand how to manage public facilities, but also get projects done. We started to change things dramatically in the past year and a half, and it's been really fascinating, but always interesting. The role of public infrastructure in the community is pretty critical. You can see the evidence of our hard work every day when you're out and about, and that's something that I'm really proud of, and I know that our employees are really proud of as well.
Though we've always known it, steady changes over the last couple decades have cemented the important role Public Works plays in both protecting and restoring essential services during natural disasters of all sizes. To discuss how Public Works teams serve as first responders, I'm joined here by two magnificent individuals, uh, Joseph Kroll of Hollywood, Florida, Jeffrey Foote of Bedford, New Hampshire. Thank you so much to both of you for being here. Thanks for having us. For anyone who might not know, what are some of the key roles that Public Works plays for first responders or as first responders? When we're performing our work, correctly and doing our due diligence, um, people take for granted safe roads, bridges, uh, public transit, safe drinking water, et cetera, et cetera. When a disaster hits, you know, we're the, we're the ones that are out there uh, actually cleaning up and repairing and performing all of those activities. In the Northeast, uh, it's winter maintenance activity, snow removal. And uh, we are the first responder to ensure that police and fire can do their jobs to access people uh, when they need to. And are there any challenges, Joseph, in working with more traditional first responders like emergency services? Uh, yes, the challenges that, that the public works departments have is, is uh, getting the buy-in from you know, the, the fire police. When you're needed, they, they call you and, and open up the roads and open up you know, for them to do their job. You all have to work together so closely. Especially in Florida, it's South Florida where it's hurricane prone and you know, uh, you can't, they can't get to do their job without going out first to, to open things up. So um, it's just, it's just uh, important that that's understood and recognized. And speaking of recognition, back to you on this question, is there more advancements on that realm, in that realm and how has the role of public responders been, been recognized over time? For me, the short answer is education and performance. Uh, I think that over the last several years with the pandemic, uh, I'm not sure about the rest of the country, but we, we really outperformed so when other agencies and services were shutting down or being suspended. Public Works really stepped up and, and performed and really augmented more so other services than they had in the past. Um, Joseph, how have you pushed uh, for this in your city council? And really, what's been the impact of this? That's a good question because we've just gotten our city commission, our city council to uh, approve a resolution um, recognizing uh, Public Works as first responders, uh, which allows us to put the Public Works logo on our vehicles and uh, now it's bringing to the attention of uh, the residents and everyone that Public Works is a first responder. So uh, we worked really hard to, to get, you know, commission to, to recognize, because that's important. That's actually a really big advancement. Yes, and right now we're, we're working to, um, on the state recognizing as first responder as well. So it's stepping stones. Jeffrey, we've seen New Hampshire pass legislation to identify public works as first responders as well, kind of on a more state level. Um, why did this happen on a state level and um, what's the impact been? Yeah, so I, I think it's for a number of different reasons. Again, um, I, I think in 2019, it was first introduced. It didn't gain traction uh, in the course of the last couple of years. Again, public works entities have performed just beyond expectation. And I think our legislator, our state legislator and our governor, you know, recognized that. It was overdue to become recognized and it was a nice bipartisan effort uh, by the state of New Hampshire to recognize uh, public works folks as first responders. Um, one of only two states in the nation that have that designation. I believe Mississippi is the other. Our, the accreditation symbol is, uh, this is the the Bedford accreditation symbol that um, we've designed and augmented with, with the APWA. It seems like more public awareness needs to happen to inform people that that's actually the case. What more needs to happen to uh, become educated about this important role? The more that we're out there doing things and the more that other cities become uh, approved and recognized, I just think it, it'll slowly catch on. But it's, it's media, it's it's... Media. It's, you know, um, it's not just the blue and the red lights, but it's also the amber and white lights that are out there as well. And so when you turn your lights on in your vehicle for an emergency to be there, you're not really respected or recognized like it was as police or fire. 
lives are taken uh, every year as you're in the streets trying trying to do things as well. So it's just a public awareness. And let's talk about APWA a little bit to you, Jeffrey. How is uh, the APWA helping to move things along, starting with ideas like the use of uh, that first responder symbol? So if you see that symbol in one city or one town, you know that those folks are, you know, they're the same um, profession. You know, in a community such as ours, you know, everyone has that symbol. We have it on our clothing, we have it on our, our vehicles, and it, it, I think it's good for public relations. There's a lot of things that we do that people don't recognize, and I think this yeah. is a, a great way to help folks understand the, the enormity of what Public Works does. And going back to the social media component, what we've done since we've got accredited is we've um, expanded our social media platform. Yes. We keep them updated on projects and and all you know everything that Public Works does. I was just going to add that that the symbol the symbol actually brings awareness because we get calls you know when they see it on the back of the trucks. Yeah. Oh, we didn't know you were a first responder, or we didn't understand, and we explain. People from the public will yes. call and ask. Oh yeah, because they start seeing it on the trucks, the re in the parks. You know, everything, everything that you do, you know, we advertise the first responder. And they can call you just the same. And just say, hey, we didn't know that. Or, you know, what is a first responder for Public Works? Or what is it you do? You know. All right. Well, I'm glad we get to talk about it here. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. We do, too. Thank yeah, you. Thank appreciate you. it. Have a great day. Great insights there. And remember to download that first responder symbol from the APWA website. That's it for our first ever episode of PWX TV, but there is plenty more to come. Tomorrow, we're exploring workforce issues with APWA CEO Scott Grayson, plus highlights from everyone's favorite, the PWX Rodeo. And where can you watch it all? PWX TV is on screens throughout the convention center in select hotels across the city, via the PWX app, on the PWX website, and of course on social media, where you'll find extended versions of interviews, individual clips to share, and much more. Come back tomorrow then as we celebrate the best of the best in public works and bring you plenty more insights from PWX 2023. See you soon.